One of the things I was interested in us learning more about was the Amazon Marketing Cloud and how brands can use it to make better decisions. I mm -hmm. recently shared something on LinkedIn uh, that the community, I think, saw value in given the engagement on it. And one of the things that from this eMarketer and LiveRamp report, I wanted to get your perspective on the number one comment from responders of this survey um, that they were most, the CPG brands were most interested in, in partnering with the retail media networks was to gain access to the retailer's first party data. 62% said that was their number one reason uh, to be involved and invest. So Amanchu, you wanted your, uh, your perspective and your take on this because you live in this space every day. Yeah, thank you, Don. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, interesting because uh, you're, as a brand, uh, it, it is, you're always reliant on, on retailer to get access to your end customers. Your end customers are shoppers and customers who are spending there. So there is a, there's an intermediary in between, right? And you want to understand what, what shoppers are uh, looking for in, in, in the, in, in their, uh, uh, when they're browsing through these dot-com sites, what are they buying? What are they putting in their carts, et cetera? And for the first time, uh, like Amazon has uh, uh, started to provide this, this data, they call it a clean room, uh, uh, where they are looking at all the advertising signals, whether it is top of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, search advertising, display advertising, all of that data at an event level uh, available to brands. Now, what does that mean and why should brands, uh, brands care about it? Uh, Ultimately, uh, Amazon has a rich amount of data on almost every single person here in US on what are their shopping behavior, uh, what products they are looking at, what products they are buying, when, uh, 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 when, uh, when, when you are actually uh, advertising, do they see your uh, display data advertising first and then uh, see your search advertising data and then convert? or they are just converting based on the search advertising that you are, that you are doing, et cetera. So all that information is, uh, is available here now that brands can get, get access to. So let me give you an example. Uh, it will make it very clear. Yeah. One of the things that is very interesting for any marketer to understand, I am using different tactics. I am actually doing awareness tactics at top of the funnel. I'm doing retargeting. I'm doing sponsored brand video. I'm doing sponsored product. How are they working together? Uh, not just individually, uh, mm -hmm. what is the ROAS on each one of them? How are they yeah. working together? What we noticed is uh, from the data that is provided in the marketing cloud, uh, the people who get exposed to both top of the funnel advertising as well as bottom of the funnel advertising, they convert four or five times more than if you just show them one ad, which is just the sponsored product ad or just the display mm -hmm. ad. So combined doing the entire full funnel advertising, both top of the funnel and bottom of the funnel can increase your purchase rate by four or five times. So that's an interesting <laughs> insight so that you that don't put your insight. budgets just in one ad tactic, you need to spread it across uh, multiple tactics across the funnel. Hmm. Another example uh, I, will, I will give is a lot of times brands say, hey, uh, search advertising or AMS works beautifully. It's, it's a conversion tactic. So I get a great ROAS there. So I should put more and more money there. My display campaigns, they don't work at all. I, get, I don't get as, as good a ROAS as, as uh, 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 on display campaigns. Mm -hmm. It's not apples to apples comparison, right? Uh, typically what happens, you, uh, as a, if you look at the journey of a shopper, they will, they, uh, let's say I'm browsing on, on, on internet, I am on CNN, I see an ad um, and I get exposed to your brand. I, uh, but I don't take any action or I click on it. I, uh, I actually land on a page. I, I'm not in the, in the, in a, uh, in, right. in, uh, in a buying pattern right now, but I, I, I remember about that thing that I, I, I saw about your ad, but then next day when I am on Amazon, I search something and I see your product again. And then I, I buy that. Now, what, what happens in these ad networks is that, they're all based on last click attribution. What it means is that 
100% of the conversion gets attributed to that search uh, 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 ad that, that the person saw second day. But there is an allocation to, or there is an impact of the display advertising as well. He got exposed to your brand uh, mm -hmm. by looking at that display ad. So in, in the advertising world, you, uh, you generally do last touch attribution. In, in typical in marketing world, like you put 100% of your attribution to the last ad that the person saw. But now with this data, with this event level data, I can actually see for every given person, hey, he got first exposed to a DSP ad, then this, this cohort of people got exposed to a retargeting ad, then they got exposed to a search ad, and then they converted. Instead of putting 100% of allocation on the search thing, I can do multi-touch attribution, mm. which is, hey, let's put 25% weightage on DSP, 10% uh, weightage on retargeting, and 50% on search. The first touch and last touch usually are very important. Right, because the first time you are getting exposed to the brand, and the last time conversion is happening. Yeah, um, now and I... then we can truly normalize your ROAS, and then see in a different way, like how people are shopping, how customers are flowing through your funnel, how, how your marketing dollars are impacting each part of their journey, right. and ultimately leading to conversion. Yeah, 